Hi, my name is Dave Walker, Senior Pastor of Elim Church Romsey, and welcome to Midweek Connect. Did you know that it's actually possible to be so excited about things that God has done in the past in your life, so excited and so uh, enraptured by them that we can actually miss what God wants to do through us right now? We can sort of just be looking at that and think, that was great. God did that. It was fantastic. Hey, guys, this is what God has done in my life. But then miss what he's trying to do through us right now. My title is Worshipping the Giver, Not the Gift. And for the next nine, ten minutes or so, at the very most, I want to share something with you, which I know will really encourage you and help you in your Christian walk over the next few days and weeks Worshipping the giver, not the gift. Did you know that the word Israel can mean probably different things to different people? I'm not being controversial, don't worry. Um, Israel can mean the Jewish people, and of course it, it does mean that. But also um, it can refer to the political uh, map um, Israel in the Middle East, because of course Israel is a political country. Um, and uh, But also in the Old Testament, um, Israel had a few meetings as well. It was Israel, God's people. But also the geographical area, Israel, um, over a long period of time was actually different things. It was actually at one point completely split up uh, totally. Let me <clears throat> read from uh, 1 Kings 12 verses 1 to 11 about something that happened that we can really learn from. Rehoboam went to Shechem for all Israel had gone there to make him king. When Jeroboam, son of Nebat, heard this, he was still in Egypt, where he had fled from King Solomon. He returned from Egypt. So they sent for Jeroboam, and he and the whole Israel of Is a whole assembly of Israel, sorry, went to Rehoboam and said to him, Your father put a heavy yoke on us, but now lighten the harsh labour and the heavy yoke he put on us, and we will serve you. Rehoboam answered, go away for three days, then come back to me. So the people went away. Then King Rehoboam consulted the elders who had served his father, Solomon, during his lifetime. How would you advise me to answer these people? He asked. They replied, if today you will be a servant to these people and serve them and give them a favorable answer, they will always be your servants. But Rehoboam rejected the advice the elders gave him and consulted the young men who had grown up with him and were serving him instead. He asked them, what is your advice? How should we answer these people who say to me, lighten the yoke your father put on us? The young men who had grown up with him replied, these men have said to you, your father put a heavy yoke on us, but make our yoke lighter. Now tell them, my little finger is thicker than my father's waist. One more verse. My father laid a heavy yoke on you, but I will make it even heavier. My father scourged you with whips. I will scourge you with scorpions. What the heck's going on here? Let me explain it. Very simple. The Israelites, God's people, come out of Egypt, don't they? They've been there a long time. Just straighten the camera a little bit there. That's fine. They've been there a long time, of course, and God led them out. They came across the Red Sea. Moses led them out. To cut a very long story short, they go through the desert, 40 years wandering, 10 commandments during that time, and they eventually come into the promised land. They go across the Jordan. They go into the promised land. They have so many battles, physical battles and spiritual battles. And, um, you know, and they, they eventually, well, they're actually ruled by a group of people called the judges, which were just leaders that God raised up. God never really wanted a king because the king could receive more affection from the people than God. But nevertheless, he gave them a king. And the first king was, of course, was Saul, who raised, who reigned for 40 years. Saul was OK, but he compromised in a few areas. And that was his downfall. But God was doing a new thing. God brought um, uh, God brought a, a, a kind of a new wave forward, something different. You see, when we take our eyes off the ball, God kind of, God kind of moves ahead, and we've got to, we've got to, we've got to watch Him. I mean, the, the, you know, the, the title today is worshiping the giver, not the gift. Saul went, David came along. David reigned for forty years ish and wasn't perfect and made some mistakes. Then Solomon came along, and Solomon came into the world not through brilliant circumstances, um, but of course he came into the world, and Solomon was very rich and very um very wealthy and very prosperous but he idolized um 
you know, um, certain foreign idols, and that was part of his downfall. And Solomon died, and and then his son Rehoboam, okay, not to be confused with Jeroboam, his son Rehoboam took over. But secretly in the background, because Rehoboam had taken his his eyes off God, and Solomon kind of had, God had anointed a guy called Jeroboam to take over. And, and said, look, Solomon, and, and, and he's, he's just kind of taking his eyes off me. I want, I now want to do something new and something fresh. And so the, the kingdom split into two. Ten tribes ruled from Samaria by um, Jeroboam. And one, two tribes, actually, Judah and Benjamin, ruled from Jerusalem. Because God had always said that the lamp of David would not go out. Um, and uh, ruled from Jerusalem by Rehoboam, and the, the country split in half. My goodness, that was a long story. Stay with me. It doesn't get any more complicated than that. Uh, but God had said something a lot earlier to uh, to Solomon. He'd said this back in 1 Kings 9, 4 to 7. He'd say, as for you, if, if you walk before me faithfully with integrity of heart and uprightness, as David your father did, and do all I commanded you, and observe my decrees and laws, I will establish your royal throne forever over Israel, as I promised David your father, when I said you'll never fail to have a successor on the throne of Israel. But if you or your descendants turn away from me, and don't observe the commands, blah, 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 then I will cut off Israel from the land I've given them, and will reject this temple. So basically, Solomon was warned, and he basically, towards the end, just thought, you know what? God's gave me all these riches years ago. It was great. It was fantastic. You know, God's brought us out of the promised land. That was then. I can do what I want now. My title is Worshipping the Giver, Not the Gift. Unless we keep our eyes on the giver and worship him and listen to what he is saying and doing now, then we can quite easily miss out on what he wants to do. The country broke up for three reasons. Number one, Solomon was idolatrous. And it, consequently, his son Rehoboam was as well. Um, uh, completely idolatrous. Number two, the second reason was Rehoboam was cruel and greedy and arrogant. And he's thinking, oh, yeah, Saul, David and Solomon, they held the country together. It'll be great. Everything will be all right. I'll just do what I want and God will bless me. That's the attitude that all of us can have sometimes, isn't it? But the third reason it broke up was God did a new thing. A new wave came forward. A new wave came forward. At Vazon Bay in Guernsey, um, in the Channel Islands. It's great because the waves come in. There's kind of surfing waves that come in. And I'm not good at surfing. I've tried it about once or twice. I've tried bodyboarding a little bit in Guernsey and Tenerife. But kind of all of a sudden you can be surfing on one wave and talking about it thinking, oh, that was brilliant. And you look behind you, and there's a whole crowd of people on a bigger wave that's going to come and overtake you. And if we take our eyes off what God wants to do in our lives and stop listening to his spirit and stop humbling ourselves and confessing and repenting and seeking his face on a daily basis, we will miss what God wants to do. And Saul missed the new wave, which was David's. Rehoboam missed the new wave, which was Jeroboam. I was walking down the street the other day on one of my exercise routines, and I saw a green branch on the floor. It had just broken off the tree. Yeah, it was really green and lovely because it was part of the tree two hours earlier. If you'd have walked past that branch on the floor, that twig, maybe two, three, four days later, the sap would have gone out of it, the, the life would have gone out of it, and it would have died. Don't look at past glories. If we look at past glories, we won't get the new thing that God wants to do. One thing that God is challenging me about personally in my life at the moment is to look at what he wants to do afresh. I'm learning more and more to read the Bible, not books about the Bible. To pray deeper and in a more exciting and sensitive way, not read books about prayer. And to engage with others and talk about Jesus and the gospel, not to read books about evangelism. The books are great, but I just want to do it now. I just want to get there. And I just want to get out. People need fresh stuff. They need the fresh stuff 
that people are doing. <clears throat> Very briefly, before I finish, if you are a church minister, there are two types of illustrations that you can give in your sermons. You can your your sermons can be sort of do you know what Abraham Lincoln in eighteen such and such said this and quote unquote. That sort of stuff's great, but here's the best sort of sermon. Sermon. Okay, you can do this after lockdown, not at the moment. Here's the best sort of sermon illustration. Guess what, guys? I was in Tesco yesterday. And there's a man walking along with a um, a broken leg, um, just and he's limping along. And the Holy Spirit told me to pray for him. I asked, I said, I'm a Christian. Would you like me to pray for you? He said, yes. And I prayed for him and God healed him. And his wife was there and she said, that's amazing. God's healed him. They've said, the doctors said they can't heal. And everyone was rejoicing. And we had a prayer meeting there at the till. That's the sort of sermon illustrations which set your church on fire and when i stand up in a pulpit i want to give fresh stuff that's happened that week because a new wave is coming saul missed the new wave solomon kind of did a little bit towards the end but rehoboam missed it and god anointed somebody new listen for that new wave god has done great things in the past in my life and in your life maybe but let's not just worship the gift. Let's worship the giver. God is doing something new now. And it's, it may not be based on something he's ever done before. But listen out to what he's doing and listen out to what he wants to do in you. He's doing something fresh. He's doing something life-giving. And he's doing something wonderful. God bless you and thank you for watching. Thank you.